So this video will be about my review of the documentary I Am Celine Dion that is on Prime Video on Amazon. It will contain spoilers for those of you that have not watched it. For those of you that have, then you'll know exactly what scenes or interview I'm talking about that's featured within the documentary. This was an eye-opening documentary in a way that we get to see Celine being herself. Besides seeing throwbacks of when she was active on the stage, when she had her concerts, and when she was able to hit those high notes back when she was at her prime. There are three songs in particular that I cannot listen to without wanting to cry. The Power of Love, it doesn't matter if it's the album version or the, the live version, I get teary-eyed. Uh, because You Love Me and To Love You More. Those three songs are where she hits her highest notes. And it makes me want to cry. Um, we get to see Celine on stage. We get to see her before she became huge. Um, and we get to see her become a mom to Renee Charles. And then to Nelson and Eddie. And then discuss what it's like being diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. But the most heartbreaking part of it for me was to see her actually go into a seizure. Like full on. In the first five minutes of the documentary, there is a, snid, a little snippet of her having the seizure. But having to have to call the ambulance to take her to the hospital. Because it was ongoing and they couldn't get her under control. When she had it a second time, we saw it full blown. She was having physical therapy. First, it went into her feet. It didn't bother her. Then it went into her hands. And when it went into her hands, she started laughing because she felt it coming and she felt embarrassed. And then when she went to go lay on her stomach, she was seizing. And her physical therapist was like, Celine, can you scooch down so I can get you on your side? She couldn't scooch down because she was, she was tensing up really bad and couldn't respond. So he had to call in Brian to help turn her on her side and then have Brian help put a, uh, a towel underneath her head so he could get her comfortable uh, while she was seizing. And she was in so much pain, she couldn't verbalize, hey, I'm in pain, somebody help me. So her physical therapist had Brian hold her hand and let them know, hey, are you in any pain? Squeeze if you're in pain. Or squeeze if you can hear my, hear my voice. She was able to, to communicate by doing that. And then they had to give her two nasal sprays, medication. But the other heartbreaking thing and shocking thing is in that documentary is that she's been suffering from this since at least 2007. And she didn't get a diagnosis till 2022. And besides getting, finding out what it is and understanding that her voice was in deep trouble because she couldn't hit her notes, as she's known for. Um, it wasn't just not being able to hit the high notes or being diagnosed with SPS. Um, it was the fact that she had to take over 80 to 90 milligrams of Valium just to swallow, just to walk, just to talk. And there's only a longevity of that before it wears off. And it could have killed her. Yeah. Uh, that broke my heart. Besides having to see her seize, go on to a full-blown seizure or episode of SPS and not be able to talk about it, but be in tears because she's so uncomfortable, yet she can't, she couldn't verbalize, hey, I'm in pain, somebody help me. And then when she came to and got out of the seizure, um... She was able to say, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed by this. I'm sorry you guys had to see this. And then she went back to singing, but she didn't hit those high notes. And it didn't overstimulate her like it did the first time. Because prior to getting the, the seizure, when they caught it on film, um, she was overstimulated in the studio. And she looked at her physical therapist. She's like, what am I supposed to do? I've known that this is all I've known my whole entire life. What am I supposed to do when, when it hits? Do I have to lay on my side? Does, you know, the, 
the EMTs have to come and get me off the stage. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I want to be able to do this and, you know, say hey to my fans. But she has to allow her body to relax and not overstress. I think she overstimulated herself and overdid it and didn't realize it because she wanted to keep going. And there came a time where she had to take a break because she she had she was with Renee. They had their children. Um, he was helping her uh, with the taking chances to her. He didn't know. They didn't know what it was. He had no idea. Um, so she had to keep going. And it, the sad thing is she couldn't stop. She had to keep going to, to pay the bills. But now she's in a place now where she's trying to focus on her health and be able to get back on that stage. But I, I, feel, I don't want her to feel like she's up. up obligated to do it because she's been doing it since she was a teenager and now she's damn near 60 you know I, I I want her to be able to to enjoy her life and enjoy the fruits of her labor because she's done this for so long and there was a painful metaphor that she used to describe her her whole thought process with SPS and wanting to perform but also having this and being overstimulated she's like I'm an apple tree. I give my fans apples. I shine them up and then I give them to my fans. But my branches are getting weak. And I'm not able to produce more apples for them. And I don't want them to come to me and say, Hey, I want more apples. Do you have any more? And not be able to give that to them. That's the metaphor she used and that shattered my heart. Second, to watching her have a full-blown seizure and not be able to communicate to what was happening. All she could do was squeeze Brian's hand and say, yes, I'm in pain, or yes, I'm still here. Um, this is not easy to watch. And for those of you who want to watch that, I want to make sure you know and you understand that you're going to be an emotional wreck once this is all over. Um, I'm glad she shared it with us because now we know what it is. Uh, but I don't want her to put herself under enormous stress and pressure to get herself back on that stage. I'd rather her focus on her health and enjoy the fruits of her labor. I understand she wants to come back, and I totally get that. But I don't want to see her stress herself out over it. You know, she's done this for so long. It's amazing, but it's also sad because it's the only thing she knows. She's done this since she was 13 years old. She's 56 now. And she's got beautiful sons, you know, R.C. and Nelson and Eddie. So, I mean, this is just my viewpoint. Not everybody's going to have the same viewpoint as me, and that's fine. Um, I've been a fan of this woman for as long as I've been a fan of Michael Jackson. So I liked them both in the same, at the same time in the 90s. So... <laughs> This this is the eye opener, and it really, 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 really hurts. And I hope Celine can get to a point where she can do what she loves, but not overstimulate herself. But again, this is just my viewpoint, and not everybody else is gonna agree, and that's fine. So, uh, this video is not to harm or harass anyone. Thank you, and have a great day.